So now we're moving on to section three of our workshop, finding the best person to work with your child. Okay, this is where we really, the rubber really begins to meet the road here. By far, the issue for many, many parents was how am I going to be able to make sure that I'm going to find somebody that really connects properly with my child? How do I know that? And especially since we're going to be online, it's got to be a pretty special relationship. So in, in many ways, in a lot of these ways, this locating a learning professional is essentially the same as what you would do when you're looking for somebody local. You just have to widen your net. So we have organized this in five parts. And I'm going to walk through each of those five parts and talk about what the benefits and challenges are for each. So first of all, with regard to personal networking, even though online tutoring is a somewhat new thing, it still behooves you to reach out to the network of people that you know and trust to see if anybody has done some experimentation or has tried this and find out what their experience was and find out whether they've got some resources or people that you can contact so that you can go through your own due diligence and interview process and find out whether they feel like the right person. There's nothing more important than having somebody in your personal network give you that emotional comfort that you're handing your child over for two hours, three hours a week, whatever it is, to somebody that's really going to take care of them. Now, kind of very much connected to that is this new dynamic that's been going on for the last several years where organizations like Decoding Dyslexia, there's a chapter in every state. And one of the most powerful things that they do is set up Facebook pages so that people in the community can speak to each other in real time. And it, it's been an incredibly powerful source of information and advice for parents whatever range or whatever area they're in with regard to getting services for the kids, whether they're brand new, the child just got diagnosed, or whether they've been at it for years. Now, the other organization that also employs Facebook really, really well is Learning Ally. And they have two pages, actually. They've got a Learning Ally, Learning Ally parent chat and a Learning Ally teacher chat. And one of the more powerful things about this is these are national level pages so that especially when you're looking out across the entire United States to find somebody that's going to fit for your child, you're going to have a national community in which you can start asking questions, connecting with them, learning more, getting some names. And then later on, in the, we're going to talk about exactly how you go through the due diligence process. But that's a very, very good start for you to, to start developing some potential names that you can talk to. There are also referral sites. And again, this is a function of what your emotional comfort is with these sites, but there are a few, and we're going to have a list of them in the supplementary materials that we're going to provide for you that you've been able to, a couple of PDFs that you're going to be able to, to get since you registered, that have actual rating systems from people who have used those particular professionals. So um, again, it's like there is a level of comfort there. But I think it's less so than using something like Learning Ally or your own personal network. But then, of course, on the far end of it, four and five, you know, of course, you can always do a Google search. The risk there is that it's going to take you a lot more time and it's going to take you a lot more effort to try to figure out, you know, who really truly is somebody that you want to focus on. But you may be able to read some things that they've written. You may be able to take a look at their blog or take a look at uh, something else on their website that gives you a sense for what kind of person they are. And then finally, of course, um, this is the least likely but still important professional organizations like the International Dyslexia Association or the Orton Gillingham website, their national website, will also provide lists sometimes. But you you don't have much information about who those people really are. And secondly, you don't know whether they're actually identified as somebody who does online tutoring. Because obviously, if you start out not knowing that, then you're going to have to go through a lot more people to find out if they are truly trained to, to do this online. 
you want to add anything to that, Erica, before we go to the next slide? Yeah, just so that you know that in the adjoining uh, PDFs that we are going to provide for you, we also give you the the organizations that have these referral lists as well. So it, it is a very, very comprehensive set of handouts that we have for you, and you will be really guided through that process. Great. Thank you. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about the next step was finding the best match. So we just talked a bit about how to locate a list of professionals for you to look into. So you want to employ the strategies that we just mentioned to you in the prior slide in order to create your list. And in fact, one of the materials you're going to get is built so that you can actually write down all the contact information, their name and where they are, so that you can kind of organize yourself and your thinking with regard to beginning the due diligence process. So that's step one. Step two is we've got a, a series of very specific questions, which will help you verify just at the level of training, credentials, and experience. And then we're going to move to the level of step three, which is matching your child to the right professional. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that's been an issue, whether it's online tutoring or just, you know, tutoring in the same room together. It's so critical, and we understand that the trust in the relationship, you have to be able to know how is this person going to engage my child in a way that builds trust in the child? How well does this person handle or what's their experience with kids who have a lot of complexity in their clinical profile? Does this particular person like to work with a specific age group? And clearly also, we think uh, Eric and I both feel very strongly that regardless of what you're doing, a multi-sensory approach is necessary. So that's step three. And then step four is something that we like to make explicit. And that is that when you're taking your child to a tutor three times a week or two times a week, you've got a chance to chat with the tutor before the session, you chat with the, the specialist after the session, then you kind of keep up and get caught up that way. When it's online, you have to be more conscious about making sure that you build in communication time so that you can monitor the child's progress, you can make sure that the relationship is still strong. If there are any questions that come up for you or questions that come up for the learning specialist, whatever it is you need to communicate about, it's best if you make it really explicit and, and add specific times for that so that you make sure you don't lose uh, a sense for where your child is and how, how the relationship is going. Yeah, and I also wanted to add that you can always ask these people too if there are activities that you can do at home to support the remedial process as well. Ah, great point. You're right. Yeah, I, I never give homework, but I always give home fun. And I always make it optional, but I tend to make it so much fun that the kids love to do it. So, you know, you can always ask for recommendations so that, you know, you can get them through the remedial process faster and more efficiently. That's, that's really excellent. That's why you're so good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so there were a few other concerns that we thought we'd mention too uh, before we move on. Uh, the first of which is connectivity. We uh, purposefully put this website in there because speedtest.net will help you check your level of connectivity and check the level of connectivity with the person that would be doing the online tutoring so that you make sure that there's the uh, bandwidth necessary to be able to do the work well. And uh, uh, Erica is going to address this issue in just a second because a lot of people say, look, we don't have connectivity. What do we do? The second is cost, which we've mentioned already. And that is that, you know, when, you've, when you're casting your net across the United States, you're going to have a much greater opportunity to find someone who can fill your needs at a cost that is more reasonable for you. So we hope that um, we can build this community to the point where that's gonna be something that's not gonna prohibit you from getting your child the help that they need. And finally, safety. Uh, clearly, as a parent, that's absolutely foremost. And uh, I think the point here is that if you do your job in terms of due diligence and you create your own connection with the online specialist, 
then you're going to be able to have a comfort level that your child is going to be safe when they're in their hands. So we, we think there are ways to mitigate each one of these concerns, but um, Erica, you had an excellent idea about connectivity that I thought it would be great to hear. Yeah. So, you know, this is the thing. If you don't have the connectivity at home, it doesn't mean that you, you can't use online support. What you can do is you can always go to your local library. You can even do sessions from school. So this year, I'm even doing sessions with some of my students that are in private school during their free periods or during study hall times where they just go to a designated room and then they can go online and Zoom with me, which is the platform that I love to use. And I find that it's the most stable one when we're talking about connectivity. But this way, you know, you have other options too. So don't feel that if you don't have a good internet connection that these online options are not available to you. That, in fact, is not the case. Right. So the, so the real point here is that we want to help you expand your view of how you might be able to address these issues if in any way they're a gating issue or an impediment to your being able to take care of your child. Right. We'd like very much to try to help you with that.